The Correctional Association teamed up with the Brooklyn Museum and hosted a panel discussion focusing on incarceration. New York is one of the only two states in America to try minors as adults in serious crimes. This practice can lead to many side effects to the young mind and their reacclimation into society. So before we get started, um, from your perspectives, what is the it that we're referring to and what's it got to do with it? What might that it be? Well, first of all, thank you all for being here and thank you, Tanisha. I think the it is the criminal justice system in America. And to take a little bit of a deeper dive into that, I would say there's sort of three it's we're really looking at. And one is how our current policies and practices both increase crime so they don't help public safety. And in addition to that, they really dehumanize and terrorize you know, large sections of our population. So that's the first it, is how our current policies and practices fail both people and communities. The second it is how we police people and prosecute crime. Who gets policed? Who gets prosecuted? What are the impacts and who are they born by? And the third it is mass incarceration as a response to crime. So what is the phenomena of mass incarceration in this country? How does it play out for children and for our elders? Thank you. But these young people that we're speaking about, they do need something to help them realize that they made a mistake and how to correct it and move forward from it and not stay stuck on it and keep committing the same things over and over or just getting worse. Because placing them inside jail prison, what is it really doing, right? You're putting a young person in a hostile environment, and what do you expect to come out of that experience for this young person? It's that much harder on that young person to come out of that experience and really make a, 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 a drastic change. So, of course, they need some type of recreation, mentoring, um, some type of therapeutic services to, to, to really tap into them in the cell so they can figure out who they really are and what they really want to be. In New York State, if you're 16, you can't get a tattoo, you can't vote, you can't go to a fake tanning booth, you can't um, go to an R-rated movie. Uh, someone even recently pointed out to me that they were in a hotel where there was a sign that said you can't swim without a parent being present in a hotel pool. But you can be held on Rikers Island and you can be questioned by the police and interrogated without your parent being notified. In our communities, unfortunately, you know, a lot of us are raised by our mothers without our fathers there. So when we, when we don't have that sense of, you know, leadership and, and guidance from a man, not a, not a, a male, a man, it, it, it leaves you like, and then they throw you in a situation where you become, you, 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 you're a situation. You could be victimized because the, the older guy's proud. They're proud of the younger guys. You can go to your cell and, there, and there's a joint under your pillow. And you go, oh man, somebody left me a joint. And if you smoke that joint, you come back and there's a bag of laundry there. And then the dude goes, oh, you got that joint? You go, yeah, good looking out. Thinking somebody looked out for you. And now nah, he goes, nah, you got to wash that laundry. Mm -hmm. So now you're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, you got to take care of that laundry. Because they know your child. They know you don't really know no better. So then you go, oh, and now you gotta, you gotta do one or two things because you gotta, you're in prison. You gotta either do that laundry and then next thing you know there's a pile of laundry like this in front of yourself. Or you gotta go say, oh, I gotta, I gotta defend myself. I gotta make a statement and let people know I'm not gonna be a victim. And all of this, you, you put in this harsh condition, which is like he said, is a mental, it's mental torture in a way, so to speak, for a child because of a mistake you made as a 16 year old. Young people don't need to be in anybody's jail, detention center, period. What they need, they really do need some type of services, some place where they really can be re rehabilitated, you know, a place where it's more therapeutic and not and not more oppressing. You gotta take into consideration what solitary confinement is really designed for, right? It's punishment on top of punishment. And I say that meaning jail is punishment. So going to the box is additional punishment. So you're being punished on top 
Bible be a punish. And another nickname for solitary confinement, believe it or not, is jail. Is that ironic? So, um, I mean, when I when I revisit it and I speak about my experience being in solitary confinement, um, I mean that's the only time, like I guess you could say, the the the, the trauma comes back from that experience because I have to speak about it and, and things like that. But it really doesn't bother me or affect me to that point because I feel people need to need to hear and understand what it's really like being in a six by eight cell, 23 hours out of the day, every day, you know. <clears throat> but what I try to do is just have people understand, and the young people that I work with understand that you don't want to go through that. You don't want to have to live, you don't want to have to live that type of life. You don't, you, you, you don't need that experience under your belt. You become so in tune with yourself, you really don't even care about other people at some point. You start to be like, nobody care about me, so why should I care about anybody else? And it's a sickness, it's like a sickness that it's kind of like you can't even really help it. So what I did, I was like, there's this one thing that you could do that you don't, that you don't really have to have no qualifications for, and that's rapping. <laughs> you know, you don't, have, you don't need to have a GED. Actually, the more your gangster tales you could tell, the better off you could do. And once I seen that, I was like, I'm gonna sneak my way into this music business, but instead of me talking about the hardships of my life, and glorifying it, I'm going to do what my man's doing with his kids and say, I'm going to tell them why they shouldn't pick up a gun. Right. Right. I'm, tell them, I'm going to tell them the hard sides, the, the harsh realities of joining the game. It's funny because when you look at the artists out there, the, the little Wayne's and the, you know, the, the, the guys who talk about shoot them up, Sue Wu Gang, Bloods, Crips, that's, they show a little fancy dance, they show a little rag hanging out the pocket, but they don't show the mother crying over the casket mm, at the funeral. Come on. They don't show those images in the videos. They don't show the collateral damage that you shoot somebody and you kill somebody. It's, it's, he's probably the best, I hate to say it, but he's probably the best one off. Because we don't know where he's going, but we know his mother's going to be crying. We know you're going to the, to the box. We know you kill somebody's brother, you kill somebody's nephew. So the collateral damage that you affect when you go out and you commit these crimes, we don't, you know, these, these artists, who I feel, are, are in an influential place to, 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 to raise our children, we need to be doing more, because kids look up to these rappers. Mm -hmm. 